What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Respect and Pray Show. I am your host, Miguel Mike Medina, Triple M. In this episode, I have someone who I'm honestly surprised to, to be able to book him for this episode. He is someone that I've known for about nine, ten years now. And, you know, he's family now. So, but his journey to where he is now has been impressive and he's continuing to climb the ladder and you know check it out um it's a good interview but this is a a, a good man and who's doing good things with his life with his career and i have no doubt that he will do and become much more better things going ahead so i'm looking forward to see the future of of this young man and like i said enjoy this interview ladies and gentlemen it's a great honor to present to you marcos gallardo marcos thank you for joining me today hey thank you for having me mike thank you i appreciate it glad to be here i gotta start from the top um what was your first passion growing up to to be to be honest with you, my first passion growing up was always to be a baseball player. You know, I I, I pretty much I uh, I uh, I followed the game of baseball since I was young. Uh, I played uh, in the minor leagues in Inwood Park since I was like eight. Uh, I played varsity baseball in, in high school. Uh, didn't get to play in college, but that was my first passion. But I, I did believe it or not, I also did have a, a passion in law enforcement. But that came second, like, you know, it, it, that was my plan B, which it was, uh, uh, you know, I really thought I had the skills, which I didn't <laughs> to become a, a professional baseball player. But that was my first passion to play ball. Um, what happened? Did an injury happen? Like, what happened with that? So I feel like I feel like when it, when it came to baseball, I wasn't I was invested, but not really invested. Right. Like I, I didn't give it 150 uh, percent. Uh, it was something that I like to do. It was more like a, a recreational activity. Uh, I was under the impression that it was easy to make it to the big leagues, which in reality it wasn't. Um, but I, I, I did sustain when I was in high school, I did sustain a, a, a knee injury, which uh, um, my bone pretty much broke in half. And uh, ever since that, moment i pretty much was like you know what i'm not playing any sports anymore uh i started to gain a little bit of weight i wasn't really active and uh that was probably at the age of like what like 17 where i was like you know what like this is this is pretty much it like i'm not my baseball dream are out the window like i'm done and um uh and it was due to the injury on my knee also you know when it rains it hurts it clicks and uh um it's healed but it, i don't i feel like it's not 100 percent healed you know i just keep it to myself but yeah. So, and then you went off to John Jay, study criminal justice, and that's where everything started for you with everything that you're doing, right? Yeah, so I I actually uh, started, I actually got, um, I got uh, accepted to go to John Jay. Uh, and on my, like, on my, like, first week of John Jay, I got, uh, an offer to go to Mercy College in Dobbs Ferry. Uh, and I wanted to live the, like, the school experience. I wanted to dorm. I didn't want to be in, in the Heights. Uh, I, you know, even though I was part of a good crew of, a, I was friends with a group, good group of guys, I knew that they were going to be a distraction. So I pretty much put John Jay on hold. I was like, thank you for your time. And I went to Mercy College where I did four years of college there. Um, and then once I joined law enforcement, I actually did, uh, I completed like a semester of uh, uh, my master's in criminal justice, which the job will pay for. Um, but I had to stop because you got to find the time to go to school during your busy schedule. Um, and at that particular moment, I was working in Harlem and I was working crazy hours. So I did complete a semester and I do have a semester under my belt. Um, and I am thinking of going back. I just got to have the time. I got to, you know, I got to find a way to make time to go to John Jay, I think it's like every Friday to complete my master's. So uh, 
but yeah, I have it on hold to let's see if it's something that I could pursue later on in my career. So life after Mercy College, mm -hmm. you graduated from there. How was the mm -hmm. process like in terms of going to that next level to get started with your career? Because I know you were working at um, Best Buy after mm -hmm. college or something like that. Yeah, so so during college, I, I was working in Best Buy. I was working in the home theater department. I was killing it. Uh, I, I actually developed a little bit of a of a, a like a little bit of an interest in in sales. Um, but I always used to come to reality, like you know what, this is this is temporary. This is just to make a quick buck to to go out and hang out with the friends. Um, while I was working in Best Buy, I met a lady that uh, I forgot her name, but she was actually it was funny. She was actually trying to hook me up with her daughter that went to Best Buy to buy a TV. And she was like, oh, like, what, where, where do you go to school at? I'm like, Mercy College. And she's like, oh, uh, I work in Children's Village in Dobbs Ferry. You should come work with us. It, you know, you'll get your feet wet uh, uh, when it comes to like the criminal justice field because Children's Village is a non-secure detention center dealing with juveniles that are, are serving time uh, uh, through the courts, through the court's order. So I applied and sure enough, within two weeks, I got, uh, I got the job. I was a uh, I was pretty much a counselor there. Um, I also did my time as an AWOL specialist, which is a a counselor that is a sign of taking these individuals to to the courts. Um, and then I got I got a call from the NYPD, and they were like, "Hey, do you want to join?" And I was like, "Absolutely!" You know, I can make a career out of this. Um, and you know, I, I had to go through a medical. Uh, I had to go through a a, a a physical exam, a written exam, a psychological exam. Uh, my process actually started September 11th of 2013. Uh, it was about a six month, pro five, six months process. And on January 14, uh, I got, sorry, on January 7th, I got the call that, uh, I was getting invited to the police academy and, um, and things got real after that, you know, uh, it was one of the best phone call, uh, that I ever got in my life. Uh, I always had an interest in law enforcement. That was always my plan B, but I know plan A was, you know, it was hard for me to accomplish, but um, yeah, so I joined the police academy on January 8th and, you know, almost a decade later, later, you know, I'm still in this, you know, and I love it. No regrets at all. You graduated from the police force in 2014. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is, obviously, you know, when you're in the force, it is a very tough and dangerous job. Mm -hmm. Can you pick at least one moment or two that made you say to yourself, I don't want my, my daughters to go to this field? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'll be honest. I have three beautiful daughters. Uh, and, you know, I would never put a, a, I would never put a stop on them becoming a police officer. If that's something that they want to do, I could just warn them. You know, it, uh, it, it's a it's a very difficult job. It takes a, a, a it takes a lot of time away from your family. Um, but like for example, I have when I was in Harlem, I I actually second guessed uh, uh, sticking to his career when I saw a lady physically get shot in the neck while sitting in the in the project benches in, in uh, Jeff houses in uh, 112th Street and Second Avenue. Uh, it was a it was a very tough experience because the thing is when when you do six months of the academy they teach you the rope the rules of regulation they teach you uh, uh, what's right what's wrong they teach you you know how to go to the shooting range stuff like that um, and then they just put you on the streets right so when I came across when I came across this 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 lady that was just sitting in the project bench with his, with her kids and she actually got shot through a, a, a gang fight in the neck and I was the first responding officer there. I was like, dude, is, is, do I really want to do this? You know, like, you know, like I don't have a problem if somebody commits a crime uh, arresting them, but like, this is real. Like this is somebody's life that's in danger. Um, um, and just like, I also experienced, so at, at that particular moment with that first moment, we handled it right. You know, one thing about law enforcement and, and, and cops is that we look out for each other. There's always that one cop that knows a little bit more than you and they kind of take over uh um and you know when you have uh, uh multiple uh uh law 
enforcement officers working together as a team, the, 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 the problem will always get resolved. Um, and another incident where I really got, you know, which is something that I think of a lot, it was uh, a domestic violence call that I went to. And while mom and dad, I guess, were fighting, there was a baby that was choking and she actually choked to her death. And that was, that was hard for me, you know, and, and it's something that always comes to my mind every day. You know, not every day, like like periodically, like especially when the field that I do now, work with mental illness, and and every time I get like a DV report, or whatever, that always comes up to my to my head, that scenario, and it's something that I wouldn't want my kids to go through, right? Like you got to be mentally strong, which I am, I am. Like I'm talking about just my first year as a cop, I went through all this, um, but there's something that you got to go, you got to be mentally strong, you got to learn how to deal and cope with these things, and you know, if my daughters can just pretty much pick a career where they're happy, where they can make money and uh, uh, they can wake up every day and pretty much be like, you know what, I'm happy to go to work, then so be it. I know I, I, I was suge I was suggesting to find another career, but if any of them want to be law enforcement or want to be a detective like their dad, then I will absolutely encourage it. But it's, it's a rough, it could be a rough job at times. And speaking of which, you are now a detective. So yeah. Once again, congratulations on that. How does it Thank feel being detective? So it, it it feels good. So when it comes to the NYPD, there's an, a, a detective uh, investigator route and there's a detective specialist route. An investigative route detective, uh, a, a person that becomes a detective through the investigation route are people that work like in special victims, narcotics, gangs, the detective squad, uh, 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 intel, all those good stuff. So whenever you get that position within 18 months, you get a detective shield, right? So you get the job, you get the position. You already know that from the moment you start your job, 18 months later, you're going to be a detective. In my, in my end, uh, a specialist is, is given to you, which from my understanding, if you become a detective specialist, it's given to you because you're performing in the position that you have, right? So it actually took me nine years and a half, I just got promoted seven months ago, nine years and a month and a half to actually, uh, for somebody, which is a, um, somebody, my sergeant and my commissioner, to be like, you know what, uh, Marcos is doing a very, very great job to the point where we feel that we should make him a detective. So, and I appreciate them for that. And there's a bunch of people, there's a bunch of guys and, and, and the squad that I work with that deserve the detective shield, just like me, because they put in the same work. Or, more, or or better, um, but it feels great. You know, it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, I've been busting my behind for nine years and a half. You know, I, I, I always have the mentality where I want to overachieve, not because I'm in competition with anybody. I think it's because it's just a fulfillment for me, right? Like, I feel like I've accomplished, I thank God I've accomplished so much in life, right? Like I've, I, I have, you know, I have a nice vehicle. I have a, a, a beautiful family. I have a beautiful wife. You know, I have the support of my friends and family. So now when I go to work, I just pretty much challenge myself. Like, how can I help somebody else today? And um, me having that mentality got me a detective shield. Uh, uh, seven and a half years later, being in this unit got me a detective shield. And, and it feels great. You know, it's a pay raise. You know, it, it, it's, it's a gold shield in your chest, not a silver shield. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just, uh, such a major accomplishment, you know, and it's the only rank where you could get promoted, not taking a test. Right. So in order for you to go from police to sergeant, you got to pass an exam in order for you to go from police to a detective, you either got to join an investigative route, or you got to succeed in the field that you're working in to a level where they recognize your good work. And that's what happened to me. And I'm extremely grateful, but it's a good, it's a good life, Mike. It's a very, very good life. I love it. Favorite breakfast meal? Favorite breakfast meal? I would have to call me Dominican if you want, but I would have to do, I would have to say mango <laughs> with longanisa, fried cheese, and salami. I hate eggs, bro. Hey, eggs. Favorite travel destination? I am going to be honest, as much as I love DR, DR is always fun. But I definitely, definitely, definitely fell in love with um, Coco Key or Coco K in the Bahamas. 
And if I could go there every year for at least two or three days, I think that would be my favorite destination at the moment. Uh, so definitely the Bahamas, beautiful place. I love it so much. A travel destination that you haven't been to yet or you want to go? <clears throat> That's a good one. Um, Definitely, definitely, definitely want to go to Thailand. Uh, the reason I want to go there is because I feel like here in New York, we got fake zoos, you know, and in Thailand, you could, you know, pet a freaking tiger and, and, and you know, like, it's just, it's just a beautiful place. I've seen it in movies. I've seen pictures. It's, uh, uh, I would have to say Thailand. Yeah, I want to go there so bad. I really do. Be a great experience, something different. Which sporty event you would like to experience? A World Series game, a Yankee Stadium, or a Super mm -hmm. Bowl? Super Bowl, hands down. Super Bowl. I love baseball. I really do. Um, but I, the older I get, the more in love I get with football. So definitely Super Bowl. Doesn't matter what team is playing. Which um, athlete would you like to meet someday? I would like to meet, um, I would have to say either Robinson Cano or Gary Sheffield. Those are two guys that I would, I would really, uh, no, I'm not gonna say kill to meet, but if I meet them, I would take the time to pretty much, you know, have a conversation with them. And if we're talking about, if, if, if you want to consider wrestling, like a, as, as a person that is an athlete, Stone Cold Steve Austin, he is my favorite person of all time. I love that man. I still watch videos of him wrestling to, to this day. He's great. Definitely. Uh, I love his attitude. I love his swag. He's just crazy, and I love it. <laughs> we have Easter, Mother's Day, and Father's Day coming up. Any mm -hmm. plans you got in mind so far? <sighs> so Father's Day, I don't plan, right? But my, my wife should plan that, right? And I am, I'll be content just staying home, <laughs> uh, uh just chilling with my with my girls and 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 having a good time for mother's day i can't disclose this i can't disclose the information because it's going to be a surprise and for easter i don't know what we're doing i don't know what we're doing for easter that's the wife handles that whatever she says that we're going to do I, we just, I just do it you know she's the boss so that's definitely uh uh i will give you my wife's contact if you want to know so you could contact her <laughs> <laughs> is there Anything about Marcos that we don't know that you want us to know in terms of interest outside of law enforcement? Mm -hmm. Um, wow, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, to be honest, I, I think what I would say about myself uh, that I feel like nobody knows is that I'm, I'm, I'm hitting a level in my life where I'm following like the spiritual route. Right. Uh, I, I was always on it and um, I'm getting more into it now. You know, I, I you know, I, I'm a believer of God. And 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 uh, for those people that would potentially see this and know, know who I am, they'll probably be like, what? You're you're following, you know, the, the whole uh, God route. But yes, I am. Uh, um, so I'm following the whole uh, spiritual route. Um, um, that would be it because every, everybody that knows me knows that I'm a, I'm, I'm a fun person. I love to help people. I go be, uh, on and beyond to, to, to find the solution of a problem, especially in my job. Uh, at times, and, and Mike, I know, I know you know me, but at times I could be very, very reserved. I like to stick to myself. I don't like to speak to anybody. Uh, and a lot of people find that shocking because I'm a very outgoing, very social person. Um, so at times I could be reserved and 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 I'm joining the spiritual route. And I'm excited and I, and I have no shame on, on uh, you know, admitting that, you know, I got to follow my God and and uh, he's the one that protects me every day in the field, protects my family uh, and my in-laws and, and all those good stuff and, and my parents and all that. And and um, yeah, so that's something about me that people don't know that I'm that I'm following, and I'm it feels good actually expressing it in your show, bro. Honestly, so spiritual route is definitely one thing. Amen, amen. Same here, Marcos. Beautiful. Thank you so much for yeah. taking the time to do this interview with me, yeah. and I salute to everything that you're doing. Keep going, brother.
Awesome, yo. Thank you so much for having me. It was definitely a pleasure, you know, being here on your show. Uh, can't wait to see it. And um, it's, it's, I'm so happy. I'm so happy I did this. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Well, that does it for this episode of the Respect and Pray show. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, right? Do not forget. I'm serious. Do not forget. Do not forget. I'm just playing. <laughs> and you guys know the motto. Have mutual respect, mutual love, and mutual admiration. So stay tuned for the next episode.